this is this is a, a Shaquille O'Neal type force of nature with uh, you know com- with a with a point guard skill set. It feels like an eternity since Zion Williamson was crowned the next big thing with injuries and a pandemic both false starting his rookie year. But with his feet wet in 2021, Zion is finally taking off. His entire offensive game is about blasting his way closer to the basket with that enormous frame. He's listed at 285 pounds, he may weigh even more, and yet he's quick enough to attack like a wing and burst into tiny gaps on his drives. Because he's so broad and powerful, when he explodes into empty space like this, he's nearly impossible to slow down. This is where he's so similar to Shaquille O'Neal, combining agility and size at oblique angles. He drives toward the sideline around Paul Millsap here, and Millsap's slide there would reroute most attackers, but Zion bursts through him like he's paper mache and finishes easily through contact. Shemi Ojale is built like a tank, and Zion just trucks him with a glancing blow and then powers through that armbar for free throws. And he's really quick for someone that massive. He has a spin move that can buckle defenders, and he indeed drives like a smaller guard at times. This is a clear out, and all he needs is a small space to attack, and without shot blockers, the defense has no chance at the cup. Notice how low he gets on some of these drives, and then has the agility to change direction when he's cut off. And his ball handling makes it all possible, so he's dangerous heading left or right. This little in and out opens space to his left, and it's hard to recover at that point. And he can also put it behind his back to get back to his right, and then he covers a ton of ground horizontally when he takes off. We often think about the vertical component of explosive leaping, but Zion kind of teleports horizontally on some of these, which takes him past a shot blocker. This allows him to take off from pretty far out. He almost flips that in before grabbing the offensive rebound. And these deep launch points can be unnatural for defenders to handle. Unnatural. He really likes to rope a dope through the legs like this and then explode and he can get right even though he's so left-hand dominant. When defenses drop off him and send him right, he can spin back with that big two-footed broad jump into empty space. If you're wondering about jump shots, he takes them every once in a blue moon. The whole league basically wants him shooting instead of rumbling toward the rim. An incredible 90% of Zion's offense comes at the rim or from the free throw line, an unheard of number for a non-post player. He's basically playing basketball the way American Gladiators played that Powerball stage where you had to run up and drop it right in the cylinder. At the beginning of February, Coach Stan Van Gundy started setting tons of ball screens to spring Zion. And this has unleashed the Kraken because he now has a run blocker to help get him downfield. These screens are often sprints from the baseline and set well inside the arc, so there's less time for defenses to recover. He rejects the screen with a quick crossover, there's the space to attack, and it's over with the big man out of the lane. Compare this to a screen set much higher, where this defender can sag way off to get a better angle and stay in front of Zion, making it a tougher finish. Here, Lonzo Ball's going to flip the screen at the last second, creating another huge runway, and he can slither around defenders in the air, and few players want to stand in and take a charge against him. Since February 2nd, the Pelicans offense has exploded with all these Zion-centric sets, posting a 126 offensive rating with him on the court, while outscoring teams by 7 points per 100. Van Gundy has off-ball tricks for Williamson, too. As the roll man, he can catch an attack on the move, especially against drop coverage like this, where he's skilled enough to catch it, put it on the deck, and glide in different directions. Plenty of the Pels' offense is about hitting him on the move like this, where it's a dribble or two into space, and then really high percentage offense in the paint. Then there's his cutting. Most players spot up right here in this pick and roll action, but Zion follows the action to build up steam so he can do that. 
This is really tricky to defend, because his man wants to help off the weak side, but Zion turns that into a rim run without the ball, and then does all his normal stuff after the catch. Defenders are conditioned to close out to shooters, so instead of spotting up, he revs up the engines and can explode off two feet comfortably for damage around the basket. And these spot up cuts catch players off guard and can cause problems, look out. Zion gets to the rim so frequently that he's basically off the charts in the play-by-play -play era for restricted area shooting. You might be surprised to see that his field goal percentage is so close to league average, and that's partially because he's hurling himself into so many shots in traffic around the rim. And sometimes he doesn't always have great lift on these finishes. Remember, he's only 6'6", and he can expose the ball out in front of him at times. But he also is more effective than his percentages suggest because of his follow-ups. He has an incredibly quick second jump, which means as defenders struggle to contest his first shot, he's loading up to grab a miss, and he follows his shot like this nearly once per game. So if we count all those self-follows as a single shot attempt, we get a more accurate picture of just how devastating he is around the basket. This singular focus has made him one of the very best scorers in the league, and since increasing his role in February, Williamson's averaging a whopping 32 points per 75 possessions, almost 13% ahead of the league. Increased primacy means increased defensive attention, which opens up playmaking opportunities by passing. To become an MVP level force, Zion's going to have to push defenses who load up on his driving game. He's still only 20 years old, so there's a lot of opportunity for growth ahead of him, especially since he's a willing passer who can hit some of these laydowns in front of him. He gets Kemba Walker backpedaling here, and when help comes, drops it off. That was a bit off target, but the intent is still there. And right now, he's really left-hand dominant as a passer. He's stuck and misses Brandon Ingram here, but still flicks it southpaw to the corner in front of him, which sets up an open triple. This is more Zion Ball attacking a clear out with that slow roll into a sharp cross, and then takes the basic near side left to right pass instead of skipping it to the other corner. A big stage in his development as a creator will be accessing the weak side with skip passes as he sees heavier coverages. And I still think he's hunting for driving gaps before slowing down and processing the floor. This swing pass and semi-transition would put a ton of pressure on the defense. But there are some encouraging building blocks here. A willingness to look for cutters, for instance, and he surveys the floor patiently against an overload and finds a great option with the lob. On this one, that hang time gives him a laydown outlet, but again, the accuracy isn't quite there yet. And while it's unlikely he'll ever be a great passer, he doesn't have to be, he just needs to keep collapsing defenses with that driving game and hitting wide open teammates. The bigger long-term challenge for him, besides staying healthy, is becoming a positive defender. He's not completely lost out there, but he's still pretty wet behind the ears. He just watches this pass without much of a thought for helping. And if you thought, well, maybe he was mesmerized by Jokic, later in the game, he's again hugged up to his man when he needs to help, and it's another late rotation. There's a hope that athleticism covers up these kinds of mistakes, but those recoveries have actually been rare thus far in his career. He's late to even match up here, and then instead of a great vertical presence, he's a matador. He was winding up to jump for a block, and he's had little presence as a rim protector because he really needs to time up his two-legged leap like this to impact shot attempts in the paint against most opponents. He's still learning how to position himself. This is a bit of a lull in awareness as he gets near the corner of the paint and then a soft closeout for show. Here's another example where he doesn't realize he shouldn't chase his man to the corner. Again, you see pointing and something like this will likely improve with experience. But I don't love his movement patterns. He kind of wiggles himself around a lot with his hands by his side 
And despite dropping back here, his recovery to the pass is off balance and kind of a mess. Here's another one with a similar pick and roll coverage and it's some stiff bouncing before lunging at the pass, losing his balance and giving up a three point play. On this one, he sort of skips himself up toward the ball, but that's way too easy of a split and it's another breakdown for free throws. Remember, Zion does have some agility. He's behind the action here after a screen, but decelerates early and recovers, although that's some wonky footwork at the end instead of squaring his chest to the ball. Because of his huge frame, navigating screens will probably always be an issue, and this is a concern with him switching onto wings, but his raw athletic tools help him against a ton of perimeter players, able to react and move with them pretty well on the outside. This time he switches onto Donovan Mitchell successfully, and he's able to mirror him pretty well with all that quick twitch explosiveness, although I don't love the lunge for the block at the end, nor that left ankle situation on the landing. Mm. Even when Zion moves his feet well, veteran players are going to exploit some of those leaps and little lunges, and I think this is another clear area to potentially improve on the defensive side, because in general, he does a solid job of keeping players in front of him, which means he can switch more readily instead of struggling with screens. Even though he's only played 68 career games, Williamson's scoring already makes him a strong all-star in my eyes. Remember, these numbers are on the rise in the last two months as he finds his footing, and growth in his passing will certainly come. I am concerned that defense will always be a bit of a limiting factor, and that his athletic prime might wane before his skill development fully sets in. But adding even basic playmaking reads to his current level of scoring, while shoring up his defense just a bit, would make Zion Williamson a low-level MVP caliber player. For more content and to support this channel, head on over to patreon.com slash thinkingbasketball where you can find extra videos, articles, and more. There's plenty more current content on the way, both on players and the 2021 season. But before that, we will wrap with the finale of Greatest Peaks next week. Hope you really enjoyed this one. Thanks as always for watching all the way to the end. And wherever you are, of course, I hope you're having a great day.